Abbreviations are so handy. They save us so much time. For example, I love the abbreviations EG and IE. Just think of all the paper I've saved over the years thanks to these two. But they aren't much help if you get them confused. Don't do that. EG is another way to say for example. It comes from the Latin phrase exempli gratia. Keep in mind, we never actually say EG out loud. It's meant to be used in writing. If you're talking, just say for example. But if you're writing, you can use the abbreviation EG. This is how we write it. Lowercase e, period, lowercase g, period, no spaces. Notice that while the Latin phrase is written in italics, the abbreviation EG is not. Let's see EG in action. American pizza parlors offer many toppings, e.g. pepperoni, sausage, peppers, onions, olives, and anchovies. There were many unforeseen consequences of prohibition, e.g. increased organized crime, increased police corruption, and increased alcohol abuse. Notice that there is usually either a comma before e.g. or the whole list is set aside in parentheses. Furthermore, some writers choose to put in a comma after the e.g. That's more common in American English writing than British English. All these formats are correct. It's really your choice as a writer about how much of a pause do you want the reader to hear. Now remember, in these examples I'm saying EG out loud, which you don't actually do in real life. Use it in your writing, but if you're speaking out loud, say for example instead. That actually suggests a good trick to make sure you're using EG correctly. Try substituting in the words for example and see if the sentence still makes sense. American pizza parlors offer many toppings. For example, pepperoni, sausage, peppers, onions, and anchovies. I see no problems with that sentence. We're giving some examples, but not a complete list. EG is perfect for that. Now what about my other favorite little abbreviation, IE? It's another one you only use when you're writing. It comes from the Latin phrase id est, which means that is. And like EG, notice that you write IE in regular lowercase letters, not in italics. Lowercase i, period, lowercase e, period. You use IE to clarify a statement in your writing. It introduces explanatory information or lets you say something another way. Let me give you some examples. My friend Don is a vegan, IE, he doesn't eat any animal products. I'm a real night owl, IE, I am up most nights until 2 a.m. Again, I'm only saying IE out loud to give you these examples. We don't use IE in normal speech. Instead, we use a phrase like that is, or in other words, in place of IE. And again, this is a good way to check to make sure you're using IE correctly in your writing. Let's try that substitution in our sentences and see if they hold up to scrutiny. My friend Don is a vegan. That is, he doesn't eat any animal products. That is a good sentence. I'm a real night owl. That is to say, I'm up most nights until 2 a.m. Again, this sentence makes sense, even with a substitution, so we can feel confident we use the right abbreviation. If you're unsure about whether to use IE or EG, just use our substitution trick. Do you want to say, for example? In that case, use EG. If you find the Latin phrase exempli gratia too hard to remember, try examples given. If your sentence instead needs to include an explanatory phrase or to restate an idea more clearly, then you should use IE. If you have trouble with the Latin phrase id est, think in essence or in effect. Now that we know more about IE and EG, you may wonder why are these two abbreviations so commonly confused? I think it's because they're both so little. That's so unfair. Let's give our little friends the recognition they so richly deserve. If you find our series on English grammar helpful, share it with someone you care about. And if you feel very strongly about the merits of our programming here on Socratica, consider becoming our patron on Patreon. You'll be helping us make more of the high quality videos you know and love. Thank you. Thank you.